What is your NSFW secret that you're proud of? Sorry for my bad English, it's my second language. Not sure if this fits here, not proud of the moment, but I am proud of the result. Me and my wife had kids and decided that was enough children. We got married after the kids were born and went on a honeymoon. We got drunk and banged without protection. The next day, we panicked a bit and went to a drugstore and got a regret pill. My wife took it at the hotel room. Crisis averted. After this, we thought nothing about it and continued with the honeymoon. Like half an hour later, she goes down on me. She never ever gives me head as she chokes easily, so this was a real treat for me. When I nut, I nut hard. And the shot landed at the back of her mouth, and she puked all over the floor and my dong. We laughed it off and joked about it for the rest of the vacation. A few weeks after we came home, she didn't get her period. We got anxious and it turned out that, yeah, she was pregnant. The only time we banged without protection was at the hotel room. When she puked after the BJ, she must have puked out the pill as well. So, now we have three kids. The youngest is as amazing as the other two and I'm proud to have him. But he must never, ever find out how he was conceived. What a perfect storm of things that needed to happen. I guess by that I mean exactly two things. One, the initial, uh, pump, as it were. And two, the vomiting of the morning after pill. I can't imagine that's happened a whole lot. Well, unlucky in one way OP, but lucky in another perhaps. Seems like the kid you have is incredible. Congratulations. Or, I'm sorry, I don't know which to say. Story 2. The first time I came home on leave from the army, I hadn't seen my wife in seven months. We stayed at my parents' house. She had moved in with her mother in that time to save money. My parents went out the first night we were there to see a movie without us, in a kind of wink-wink, nod-nod situation. I had been in an incredibly stressful environment for seven months without seeing my wife. I was also now highly physically fit. I banged that girl so hard that I broke my cherry wood bed frame and the bed collapsed underneath us. I was pretty busy that week and forgot to fix it before I left for Germany. The first phone call to my dad, he said, Oh, yeah, I fixed your bed frame for you. I don't know what you did to that poor girl, but I hope she's alright. Story 3. When I was in college, I lived in a dorm that had a pool table. One night, I was drunk with my then-boyfriend, and we stumbled in there at around 3am to bang. We ended up stripping down totally, not really caring about our nudity since the dorm was dead that night. While we were doing the deed, we ended up on the ground, on the non-door-facing side of the table. And almost immediately, someone opens the door and turns the light on. X and I freeze, and I turn my head to look under the table and see their feet freeze as they see our clothes scattered everywhere. Not a noise was made, no one moved. Complete awkwardness for what felt like forever, aka like 7 seconds. The other guy just turned off the light and backed out. We never got caught. Story 4. I once banged a girl who worked in post delivery. While I was signing for the delivery, she said something in my house smelled nice. I just made coffee and wanted to offer her a cup. So I said, I know, you want to come in? Which she did. She grabbed my crotch within 10 seconds and my brain went, screw it, let's do this, I guess. She didn't get any coffee, though. Ah yes, the secret to bang random people is to not know that you're offering to bang them. And then when they take you up on the offer you forgot you made or didn't know you made, you just say, okay, sure. Story 5. I joined the kink community in my city recently. It's literally the best thing that's happened in my life for a decade. I've made a ton of super nice, interesting friends, I'm super happy all the time, I'm losing weight because I'm practicing knots, and I'm too distracted to eat. I learned all the rules, values, etiquettes. The kink community is surprisingly wholesome and responsible. Started going to meetings and was accepted very quickly. A few of my older play partners have nicknamed me the prodigy for my advanced level of kinkiness and pain tolerance despite this only being my second month. I was basically made for it. I'm already coordinating kink art projects as well as all sorts of fun playdates. I get spanked or tied up at least twice a week. The parties are off the hook and completely alcohol and drug free. I love being able to have an amazing time without getting wasted. They do fundraisers for various charities all the time, so I'm doing good. I've also gotten business leads from networking through the community. Two days ago I had an MMF threesome. Two men all to myself. And then the next day, back to work as usual. I'm making photocopies of some dumb contract while having crazy flashbacks of doing something I never would have predicted happening. I feel like a goddess. I'm so proud of this and am at a seriously high level of life satisfaction. I live with my parents and just started my first professional serious person job. All of this is a complete secret, obviously. I have to dial down my response to how are you doing, because people would want to know more if I said un frickin believable My parents think I'm depressed and broody because I constantly have my door locked or I'm going out when they're getting in. Really, I'm having the time of my life. As a side note, everything I'm doing is safe, safe, safe. Again, the organized community is extremely responsible and respectful. Look, I gotta be 100% honest here, I'm, I'm just jealous. 
of the happiness, mostly. I think I could do without the rest, but that level of life satisfaction and self-fulfillment? Girl has slam-dunked Maslow's hierarchy of needs, it seems. She probably reached enlightenment through this from the sounds of it. So yeah, I'm jealous. Not really into the whole kink thing, though. So I guess I'll have to find another avenue. Or maybe that's the only way. Buddhists have been going about it all wrong. Story 6. I was offered butt stuff by a sales rep who looked like thin Jessica Simpson and turned her down, because I had recently started dating the woman who would become my wife. Kissed me in front of the whole bar, bit my frickin' lip, and when I pulled her out of there to talk her down, she grabbed my junk and told me where she would like to put it. Stayed true to my girl, married her, and we're celebrating our sixth anniversary this year. Story 7. Had the best banging to date when a friend of mine said he would give me a ride home after a long day of work. The car ride was long but immensely fun because of our playful banter. We swapped intimate stories, and I could count on having a great conversation with him because of our common interests. He came inside my small apartment, and one thing led to another, and basically, we went a few rounds. Tried many positions that had me bending in awkward angles but felt really good. And we eventually moved my mattress so much that it flipped on us. Oh, and during his more rougher goes, we broke my curtain rod. He also enjoyed my impromptu twerking during doggy, which I had never done before but felt so good. So I plan to do that again. Also, I learned that I could squirt that day. All in all, it was an amazing night. Well, that was certainly a story to read in first person. But, uh, good for you, OP. Sounds like you had a lot of fun. Story 8. After being in a miserable monogamous relationship for the entirety of my adult life, I am finally with someone who is more intimately compatible with me. Two weeks ago, one of her close friends who she had hooked up with in the past came over and we had a great night out dancing. When we got home, my girlfriend crashed, but I wanted to bang. So I asked my girlfriend if it would be okay if I banged with her friend. She said, go for it, so I did. Her and I had an amazing banging session. The following day, the two of them were discussing it and they both agree I'm great in bed. This is a very big confidence booster for me, because the woman I was previously with for 12 years was very repressed, and we would only ever bang every 3-6 to six months, and she was the only person I had ever banged with. It's hard to explain in text, but I feel more intimately liberated and as a result happier than I've ever been in my life. I've been wanting to tell someone, but no one in real life wants to hear about all the awesome banging you're doing. And no one on the internet ever believes you when you talk about it. And it's not that I want to brag or anything, I'm just so happy and I wish I could express that happiness to people. Story 9. I once went to dinner with a girl I was dating at the time and her mom. The restaurant was packed. We ended up taking one of the last available tables. I fingered the girl under the table, pretty sure the mom knew, as the girl dropped her silverware twice and kicked the table once. She was trying her best to not to make a sound, but let out a slight peep a couple of times. The first time, the mom looked at her confused, and then kind of looked at me. I shrugged unassumingly. The second time, the mom cut her eyes sharp at her, then looked at me and kind of grinned and I sort of let a bit of a grin slip back at her. She never said anything about it, but I'm pretty sure she knew what was going on. OP, I, I refuse. What kind of- what- <sighs> Sorry, I know I stammer a lot in these commentaries, but it's just a natural reaction for me for being aghast at things. There's no way a mother would be like, yeah, yeah, I know what you're doing to my daughter, and like it, or be happy about- I don't- I don't know. This is all very weird to me. Maybe some families are like that. I can't even fathom it. And honestly, I don't know if I want to. Story 10. Got together with a girl who was also in second year at university with me. It was pretty carnal. We were really attracted to one another and hooked up often and aggressively. It was hot. Anyway, one of the first few times we got together, she invited me over. I went into her room and she had a red, sheer satin sheet thrown over her lampshade casting a red hue to the room. She had high thread count Egyptian cotton sheets and tons of pillows on her bed. She also had, beside the bed, a bowl of mixed fruit. We banged, and afterwards I lay back in the afterglow of banging onto a mountain of pillows, with her draped, naked across me, laying on my chest amidst expensive cotton sheets. And she began to frickin' feed me fruit from the fruit bowl, like actually holding cherries up for me to bite off the stem. I felt like a sultan. It was amazing. I think this girl just had a thing for being like a concubine to a Roman emperor or something. This sounds very specific, very planned, and sounds like she was into it. OP also sounds like he was into it too, like, come on, who wouldn't be? You're living the life, OP. Keep on killing it. 
Story 11. My wife and I put a penny in a bank every time we banged. I know the exact number of times I've banged in my life because I've only ever banged with my wife. I have a wheat penny tattoo on my right leg that I got on our anniversary. I think sixth year. We also know how many times it took to conceive our two kids because we used nickels for one and dimes for the other. We count pennies every anniversary and write down totals and average for the year. Some people know this story, including friends at work, but it's not something I would say is 100% safe for work. Story 12. I banged with identical twins. Sadly, not together. Started talking to Twin One on an anonymous social media app. We got to intimately texting. She was sending me a lot of explicit pics and vids, but after a few weeks it sort of fizzled out before meeting. Fast forward a month or so and I bumped into what I thought was the same girl from the app, and I almost ruined it by saying what I thought was her name. Turned out it was Twin Two. We got to talking and the same thing happened. She was completely unaware I'd been talking to her sister. Twin Two and I met soon after and banged a few times. Funny, at one point she was talking about Twin One and how they're so different. Because Twin One would never be this dirty with guys. God, it was so hard biting my tongue from saying, Actually, she sent me pics of her butthole. Anyway, Twin Two and I, after a few weeks, sort of cooled off. She met someone and they started a proper relationship. Twin One pops up again on social media. We begin talking again and this time we met and also banged a few times. Not the most exciting experiences in the world, but it was at least pretty unique. Okay, I gotta say, I don't get this one. People are like, I wanna bang twins at the same time. What kind of screwed up family dynamic would have to exist for that? Like, I can't- I'm an only child, so I guess I don't really know. But from what I've heard from people with siblings, that would be insanely off limits forever. And that's like everyone I know with siblings too. Maybe you just have to find that like one pair of identical twins that'll do it. But even then, I would be like, really? This is kind of weird. Are, are you sure? Story 13. I'm a male nursing student. When I had a two-month internship at a hospital, I worked together with some nurses who were both male and female. Majority was female, of course. I was also working together with two other students in the department. The three of us each had one mentor nurse. They gave us grades. One day I had a late shift with another student and we didn't actually talk much since we worked together. Well, one nurse said we had to check on a patient who rang their little bell. We did what we had to do and made some eye contact while doing it. And that made it happen, I guess. We left the room and she went the other way from the nursing post and I asked where she was going. Come with me and find out, she said. I followed already thinking awesome stuff would happen and what do you know? We went to a storeroom, locked the door, and had amazing banging. From that day we banged like four times until our internship was done. After that we had a friends with benefits thing going on for a good four months until she got a boyfriend. Story 14. I proposed to my current fiancé in Paris nearly two years ago. I had a secret photographer following us around to capture the walk to the location I would drop to a knee, and we had an hour-long engagement photography session after the yes. In order to get a genuine picture of us laughing, the photographer asked me to whisper something funny or cute into her ear. I proceeded to explain my future plans to buy a house and have a dedicated banging dungeon under lock and key, so that we would have our own private room just for us to have wild times in. Neither of us could keep a straight face, and that is a crowd favorite picture in our photo book. We laugh every time someone says that picture is the best. Oh, it's criminal that I don't get to see this photo now. Like, I get it, privacy reasons, but oh, I want to see it so bad. Knowing the story behind it would enhance it so much. Story 15. When I was in college, I had a job at night doing data processing stuff for a company. I was literally the only one in the building and nobody else ever came in. One night I was pretty tired and pretty frisky, so I called my then girlfriend to meet me there. I picked the office of one of the people I disliked the most and we went to town. All over the place, crazy fun banging that was loud and ridiculous. The next day my boss called me and said he needed me to come in. I go sit down in his office and then the president of the company walks in and shuts the door. Oh no. President of the company proceeds to angrily state how my evening job is a privilege and they expect a lot of me and not to abuse this privilege. You know how minutes turn into hours? Dude, this was like minutes into years. I'm just waiting for it. Then he says, So I came to the office last night and walk in. At that moment, time stopped. President of the company was a longtime friend of my very Catholic and Christian family. Boss was a very close friend of the family. I'm just sitting there bracing for frickin' impact. When he says, 
and someone left the goddamn door unlocked to the back street. Now I know you still smoke and goddammit I know that you go out that door. And all I could do was laugh and shake his hand while apologizing profusely. They both looked at me like I was crazy. I ended up working for the company on and off until, well, now. I'm a senior IT consultant for both of them and work there on and off for a large amount of money 20 years later. To this day, neither boss, who is about to retire, or president, who is retired, knows that the door was left open because I was ramming a crazy redhead in the vice president's office that night. And many nights after that, too. We just made sure to lock the door. Not a single camera in this office building, OP? I don't know about that. Seems suspicious. Story 16. I was having a really, really crappy day once. I went out to the bar with a friend and she had to leave early. I had recently been dumped so I was feeling unattractive and sad and was struggling with some other personal things. My friend left and I started talking to a guy at the bar while I was finishing my last drink. Suddenly, he just said, Hey, do you want to go to my car and smoke some pot while I eat your kitty? I told him I didn't smoke pot. He downed the rest of his drink and said, Perfect and then took me to his car. He fully clothed, moved my shorts aside, and gave me the best oral I have ever had in my whole life. I had no idea who this guy was, his name, whether he even lives here, out-of-state car tags. He took occasional breaks to kiss me, but otherwise we had no other interaction. Neither of us were even naked. That's when I realized I'm attractive. Dude was incredibly hot, and I never knew I could land anything from someone like that, much less unreciprocated oral in a parking space. Look, OP, I get what you're saying. And yes, big, big win for sure. The parking space bit doesn't sound like something to brag about to me. I, I don't know. Maybe it's just me. But for me, that kind of takes some points off, you know? I'm sure people out there disagree with me, though. Story 17. So I had a Tinder date with a girl I've never met before. She lives about three hours away from where I used to live. It was quite a nice evening. We talked a lot, smoked some weed, and watched a movie. With both of us being a little shy, nothing really happened. So after she fell asleep, I went to the kitchen to get some water. It wasn't very late, about 10pm, and her roommate sat there asking me how the date was going so far. I told her that it was very fun so far and that I was looking forward to the next two days with her, but also told her that there was no intimate interaction whatsoever so far. All of a sudden, she stood up and slowly walked towards me, saying, Can you keep a secret? And started kissing me so freaking passionately, I still get a little roused just thinking about it. After 15 minutes of making out with my hands between her thighs, she started to pull down my pants and give me one of the best blowies I have ever had. I lasted about maybe two minutes because I was so turned on by the whole thing that was going on. After I finished, she just walked outside of the kitchen with a smile and wished me good night. The next two days felt a bit awkward with both of the girls sitting together with me in the kitchen when we made dinner. Oh, two minutes, OP. No need to show off, brother. Story 18. My first successful booty call was at a house party in high school. Loud music, keg, liquor bottles. I went to a small public school, about 100 kids per grade. So it was basically the social slash party crowd from each grade came here, so it was all ages. I was a junior at the time, and I see this super hot senior in the kitchen who I've always had a crush on. Skinny, but huge breasts and a big butt. Blonde hair, great smile. She was known for sleeping around. I was a virgin, and she was totally out of my league. I was a skinny, unathletic kid. Not a dork or a nerd, but not exactly in the cool crowd either. I just liked to party. I pass by her, intentionally, in the kitchen while I'm on my way to refill my cup. We know of each other and we've been at different social occasions similar to this one before, but we've never had too many conversations. I pass by and say hello. She actually starts a convo that went really well. I try to play it cool and go about my night. Well, I'm gonna go refill. I don't even think I have your number. We should hang out sometime. Boom. She happily gives me her number, smiles and turns her back on me. I leave for the rest of the night. I didn't go home, but I went back to a friend's house. I decided to text her. Hey, are you still at the party? Yeah, are you coming back? Should I? Yeah. Tell my friend, I gotta go. Next thing, I'm at the party. It's later now and it's starting to die down. As I'm about to walk through the front door, a mutual friend of this hot girl and myself comes up to me and says, are you gonna hook up with insert name tonight? At this point, I'm like, oh god, she actually does want to. I walk into the party, tunnel vision. I'm here for one thing and one thing only, make out with this girl. Keep in mind, I'm a virgin and did not have the intentions of banging. I thought we were just gonna make out. I find her in the kitchen. You're here, she says. Come with me. She grabs my hand, takes me out the kitchen door to the backyard. The house we were at had this garage slash barn type deal. She drags me back there. We go up the stairs in the barn and boom, we start making out. Next thing I know, my hands are up her shirt. Next thing I know after that, her hands are down my pants. 
I'm thinking to myself, this is freaking awesome. Suddenly, she stops kissing me and pulls my hands away from her precious, luscious, goddamn beautiful breasts. I get worried. Did I offend her? What did I do? How did I screw this up? I didn't know what to say. Instead, she looks at me and says, I'm not gonna bang you in this barn. Keep in mind that obviously things were getting hot and heated, but I was naive and honestly didn't want to bang. Just thought that this was a really epic makeout session with the older girl who is super hot. Anyway, in my mind, I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. But I just reply, let's get out of here. As if I have my own place. I have to bring her to my freaking parents' house. We get in my car and I'm taking her back to my place. It's 3 a.m. on a Friday. My parents don't usually stay up late. I'll be able to sneak in and go upstairs. Wrong. I open the door and both of my parents are in the kitchen, still up, drinking, listening to music. I walk in with this girl and my parents are like, uh... I freeze. This wasn't part of the plan. Ah, crap. Abort, abort, abort. I said the first thing that came to my mind. Uh, hey, mom and dad. This is... name. We were at a party and she needed a ride home, but her parents are at a wedding, so I said she can hang out here until they get home tonight. Mom and dad look at each other like, what the hell? But they just say, uh, okay. I take her upstairs. Long story short, I was no longer a virgin in about half an hour. I take her home after. Get back and my mom's sitting on the couch in the living room waiting for me. I come in. All she says is, don't ever bring a girl like that home again. I say, okay, go upstairs and pass out. With the same satisfaction as the kid in the ending scene of Dazed and Confused. I'm proud of this because not only did I score with a girl way out of my league, but I was able to come up with a barely believable excuse to get her upstairs. My parents obviously knew what was going on the entire time, but they're chill and let it happen. A great moment in my life. And that is a great saga to end it on. Honestly, this thread was not as many humble brags as I thought it would be. Don't get me wrong, we definitely read a few. But some of them, or even most of them, were just genuinely good stories that people were proud of. Sounds like a lot of people in this thread had some really good times. And if that last story should teach us anything, it's that if you want a girl's number, try asking. OP was kinda smooth with it, so you'll have to pull some moves, don't get me wrong. But you don't have to go crazy worrying about it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you had as much fun as I did reading these. Have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you in the next one.